Hi, and welcome back to ASEAN News. With me, Vanessa. International Investor says China to outperform other nations in 2021. International investor Jim Rogers says China will continue to outperform other countries in 2021 after taking the lead in containing the COVID-19 pandemic and becoming the world's only large economy with growth in 2020. In an exclusive interview with China Global Television Network, Rogers notes China's efforts and achievements in battling the coronavirus and resuming its economic activities. China has done a less bad job than most countries dealing with 2020. 2020 turned out to be a very bad year for most countries, uh, but China less bad, for some reason, uh, has done a less bad job. And if you look to 2021, I think you will find the same, that China's prospects are probably better than most countries in the world. Rogers also praises China's dual circulation development pattern, which is defined as a policy that takes the domestic market as the mainstay while letting internal and external markets boost each other. China has said that they're going to develop the economy on both fronts, international and domestic, which is what everybody should do. Uh, China has been more closed for a long time than many countries, but now China is. And the actions prove it. They are developing their economy internationally and domestically. In my view, they can op open up more to the outside. Roger shares his thoughts on global markets and investing amid the spread of COVID-19 in an interview with China Central Television. He praises China's control of the disease in comparison to the United States' management of the situation and he will further invest in China and Russia. Malaysian court says cannot reopen investigation into RSM vet because it does not have sufficient evidence. A Malaysian court announces it will not reopen a probe into the death of an Irish teenager whose body was found in the jungle after she went missing during a family holiday, saying she likely died of a misadventure. So after hearing all the relevant uh, the relevant evidence, I rule out that I rule that there was no one involved in the death of Nora, and it is no it is more probable than not that she died by misadventure, i.e., she had gone out of the Sora house on her own and subsequently got lost in the abandoned farm or plantation. For me to speculate and presume of her action and involvement of third party without any proof fact would be a breach of my duty. So the inquiry is hereby closed. In August 2019, the yes, naked body on. of Nora Ain Koiring, 15, who suffered from learning difficulties, was found in a ravine near the Dusun Holiday Resort, where her family was staying in Serembang, about 70 kilometers, 44 miles south of the Malaysian capital. The Serembang coroner's court closed the inquiry, saying there was insufficient evidence to indicate full play. The court ruled that there was no one involved in Koiring's death, and it was more likely she had simply got lost in the jungle. Her parents, Sebastian and Mehap Koiring, appeared solemn on the court's proceedings live stream as the decision was read. Her mother, Mehap, one of nearly 50 witnesses who testified at the inquest, she believes her daughter can be abducted and accused authorities of not taking her concerns seriously. WHO recommends people must take two doses of COVID-19 vaccine within a period of 21 to 28 days. The World Health Organization says as many countries grappled with a more highly infectious coronavirus variant, COVID-19 patients should take two doses of Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine within a period of 21 to 28 days. Uh, SAGE recommends the administration of two doses of this vaccine within 21 to 28 days. Uh, while we acknowledge the absence of data on safety and efficacy after one dose beyond the three, four weeks studied in the clinical trials, SAGE made a provision for countries in exceptional circumstances of vaccine supply constraints and epidemiologic settings to delay the administration of the second dose for a few weeks in order to maximize the number of individuals benefiting from a first dose. He says Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization, SAGE, did not recommend the Pfizer jab for travelers unless they are in a very high-risk group. 
due to the very limited supply of COVID-19 drugs at present. In the current period of very limited supply, preferential vaccination of international travels would counter the principle of equity. Because of this and the lack of evidence to inform whether vaccination reduces the risk of transmission, SAGE currently does not recommend COVID-19 vaccination of travelers unless they are also part of a high-risk group identified within the prioritization roadmap. Kate O'Brien, a WHO immunization expert, says there are no outside limit for receiving a second vaccine dose. The WHO's technical chief on COVID-19, Maria van Kerkhove, says there is no indication that the coronavirus variant identified in South Africa is more transmissible than the one spreading fast in Britain. Meanwhile, Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, WHO Director General, says very disappointed that China had not authorized entry of an international mission to examine the origins of the global coronavirus pandemic. Today, we learned that Chinese officials have not yet finalized the necessary permissions for the team's arrival in China. I'm very disappointed with this news given that two members had already begun their journeys and others were not able to travel at the last minute. But I have been in contact with senior Chinese officials and I have once again made, made it clear that the mission is a priority for WHO and the international team. China reported the first case of pneumonia of unknown cause in the city of Wuhan to the WHO on December 31, 2019, and closed a market where the novel coronavirus was believed to have emerged. The United States, which has accused China of having hidden the outbreak's extent, has called for a transparent. WHO led investigation and criticized its terms, which allowed Chinese scientists to do the first phase of preliminary research. South Korea sends diplomats to Tehran, talks after Iran seizes tankers. Foreign Minister spokesman Choi Yong sam tells a briefing in Seoul, Vice Minister Cho Yul discusses various pending issues between the two countries on top of the Caesar. Minister Kang kyu held a meeting of the task force. Also, we have been working to assess the situation, secure the swift release of the tanker, ask for the protection of our people and their safe return by contacting the diplomatic authorities. South Korea is dispatching a delegation to Iran to seek to release of a tanker seized in Gulf waters by Iranian forces, with a senior diplomat said to go ahead with a planned visit to Tehran amid tensions over 7 billion US dollars in Iranian funds frozen in Korean banks due to the United States sanctions. News of the visits came as Seoul's foreign minister calls in the Iranian ambassador to South Korea for a meeting and urges the early release of the South Korean flagged tanker and its crew of 20. It was carrying a cargo of more than 7,000 tons of ethanol when it over what Iranian media said were pollution violations. Iranian state television previously cites a Tehran government official as saying South Korea's vice foreign minister Choi jong kun had been scheduled to visit before the seizure of the tanker Hankook Chemi to discuss Iran's demand that the frozen fund be released. South Korea reopens gym's activity with distance rules after COVID-19 victims increase. The number of deaths of the coronavirus in South Korea passed 1,000, while an increased number of gym owners says they will reopen in protest against strict social distancing rules. I open a gym with an expectation of a New Year peak season and the benefits of opening a new facility. But if the situation continues, I might not even get any clients at all and close the gym. After using aggressive testing and tracing to blunt several earlier waves of the coronavirus without widespread lockdowns, South Korea imposes increasingly strident social distancing rules as it struggles to stop its largest wave yet. The government says it is avoiding imposing the highest level of the lockdown, which would impose a blanket ban on restaurants and other businesses that can currently still operate with some restrictions, in order to avoid economic damage.
체육시설이 계속 집합금지가 된 거는 아무래도 운동을 하면 We have restricted indoor sports facilities because droplets would be produced and it is hard to wear face masks during workouts. The ban had been based on these factors and we will discuss with authorities the fairness of the guidelines and check and revise social distancing rules considering the risk of each facility and business type. 평가해서 보완하도록 중수본 방대 중수본 중대본과 협의하도록 하겠습니다. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency director Jung Eun Kyung says the gym ban had been based on the difficulty of wearing face mask during workouts but adds that authorities will discuss the fairness of the guidelines and potential changes to them. Indonesian Navy finds foreign suspicious device in Sulawesi waters. Indonesian Navy Chief Yuro Margono held a news conference on the founding of a suspicious device that was discovered by fishermen in the eastern part of the Indonesian waters of Sulawesi in December 2020. Tidak bisa alat ini untuk mendeteksi keberadaan kapal-kapal kita, keberadaan kapal atas air. The device is not capable of detecting our fleets or even vessels passing through. It is only collecting data and information underwater, which is possibly being used for the fishing industry or drilling or measuring underwater depths. For military, it can feed information of submarine tracks to avoid being detected by the solar signals from the other vessels. By having this, we need to remain alert on the existence of the foreign vessels in our territory, especially in international roads in our economic exclusive zone, because this device has not been regulated under UNCLOS and in our country. We may suggest this to the President on banning this device to operate in Indonesia. The foreign device, which shapes like a missile with a propeller, are termed as an underwater glider by the Navy. Margono informs that the device has no capability of detecting vessels as it can only send data through satellite from the camera on its body. The device is still under investigation by the Navy, targeting amount of further research. Brazilian government closed an agreement with China on 100 doses of COVID-19 vaccines for use in the national immunization program. Health Minister Eduardo Pazuello at the news conference says the government is closing a deal for up to 100 million doses of the vaccine that developed by China's Sinovac Biotech called CoronaVac for use in the national immunization program. Hoje, nós assinamos com o Butantan Assinado. Today we signed with the Butantan less than 24 hours after the provisional measure. We signed the contract for the delivery of the first 46 million doses until April and 54 million additional doses during the year, for a total of 100 million doses. In the case of Butantan vaccine, two doses per person will be applied. No caso da vacina do Butantan, são duas doses por pessoa. He praises the vaccine developed by Janssen, a unit of Johnson & Johnson, but says the company could not only offer 3 million doses in the second half of this year. Brazil faces a second wave of coronavirus outbreak after the United States, the country's death toll passes 200,000. Meanwhile, President Jair Bolsonaro criticizes for downplaying the pandemic's gravity and undermining trust in vaccines. He will refuse any COVID-19 vaccine and spurned Sinovac shot in particular. Butantan announces that the late-stage trial results in Brazil show the Chinese vaccine had a 78 efficacy rate and entirely prevent severe COVID-19 cases as a center seeks emergency use authorization. Brazil is also talks with a private local company that plans to make Russia's Sputnik V vaccine. The photos show Indonesian radical cleric live in prison after complete his sentence. Indonesia Islamic cleric Abu Bakar Bashir releases from prison he has suspected mastermind of the 2002 Bali bombings. And among the most notorious extremists in the Muslim-majority country, still photographs released by law and human rights ministry show. Ratia Prianti, a spokeswoman for the ministry, says his legal team requests for him to leave the prison early to avoid crowd. Deticom reports 
Bashir picks up by his family and was driving to his home in central Java, he is regarded as the spiritual leader of the Jama'a Islamiyah, a jihadist network with ties to Al-Qaeda, was imprisoned in 2011 for 15 years for his links to a militant training camp in Aceh province. After receiving periodic reductions in his jail term, Indonesia's Law and Human Rights Ministry says he's completed his sentence now. Japanese Prime Minister declares a state of emergency for Tokyo after COVID-19 surge. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga declares a state of emergency in the Tokyo metropolitan area including Tokyo, Saitama, Chiba and Kanagawa, authorizing tougher measures to fight surging COVID-19 infections. The state of emergency will be effective from Friday to February 7, with measures including urging people to stay at home and calling for restaurants and bars to stop serving alcohol by 1900 hours and close by 20 p.m. Suga asked younger people to avoid making unnecessary outing in order to prevent the further spread of the virus and protect the life of others. He also says the government will provide up to 1.8 million yen or equal to 7,400 US dollars per month to each food and drink facility that complies with the government's request to shorten operating hours. Under the new measures, the government is set to increase financial aid for dining and drinking establishments that will shorten business hours from up to 40,000 yen or equal to $390 a day to a maximum 60,000 yen or equal to $585. The new emergency declaration came as Tokyo reports a record 2,447 new daily COVID-19 infections, far eclipsing the previous record of 1,591 cases. Chinese Media Group launches welfare campaign to help Hubei's economic recovery. The China Media Group launches a welfare campaign under its Brand Rich project to help the economic recovery of Hubei province once the epicenter in China's coronavirus outbreak. The campaign launches in Beijing and Wuhan, the capital city of Hubei, simultaneously online. The CMG will provide another 500 million yuan, about 77.35 million US dollars of advertising resources, platforms and other services for free to help Hubei to recover its economy and boost the domestic consumer's confidence in products made in the province. Over the past year, the CMG has already provided 500 million yuan of advertising resources for free to Hubei. A total of 63 kinds of products in three categories, agriculture, industry, cultural tourism, have been broadcast for more than 12,000 times through 14 channels of the CMG. The live streaming events organized by the CMG also help to promote the sales of agriculture and sideline products of the province. In addition, enterprises and cooperative enterprises of the CMG's brand Rich Project donate more than 5.6 billion yuan, about 866.3 million US dollars in goods and materials to Hubei. Thank you for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you!